Dr. Stevens, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we really appreciate your advice and your voice in the mental health arena. And we really are looking forward to the tips you can give folks about the impact of communications and mental health in the workplace. Well, I think there's a wide variety of thoughts, feelings, and behaviors as people are coming out of a year where their schedule was really disruptive, particularly in the workplace. And there's gonna be, some people are gonna feel excited about that, wanna get back to the old normal. Some people might feel panicked or nervous about a year hibernating in their own COVID cave. So uh, they might not enjoy the water cooler chit chat anymore or going out after work uh, for a drink uh, in a happy hour. There are probably some new etiquettes that there's probably a new etiquette that we want to follow um, that is different. I'll give you a couple examples of what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing in uh, my own workplace. Yes, you mentioned it. In the past, uh, it might have been all right to come to work with a cold. It might have even been expected. As a physician, it would be really difficult for me. I was feeling slightly under the weather to cancel a whole day's clinic and disrupt people who have been waiting. Uh, for days, weeks, or longer for an appointment. I think now when we've seen the rise of virtual platforms and virtual uh, visits or meetings like we're having today, if you have a cold, don't come in. Your employees will notice you if you're by the microwave, heating up your tea with your lemon and honey, or going through a half a box of tissues. Mm -hmm. There's probably some other things to keep in mind as well. In the past, uh, you know, it's the budget time of year, sitting elbow to elbow as you're pouring over spreadsheets. Think of the old police song, don't stand so close to me, maybe keep that in your head because people might have different personal boundaries. Don't, you know, the elevator's there. If it's, you see a spot in the past, it's okay to kind of cram in there. These days, be aware of personal space. People are gonna have different risk tolerances, different feelings about boundaries and uh, be respectful of that even if you've been vaccinated and feel it's all right to go back to a new normal. There's probably a couple of other things to think about. Many of us have gotten used to dressing informally. So the idea of fitting back into our suits or our tailored outfits could also bring about significant anxiety. I've seen that with people that are worried about, A, will it fit uh, anymore? But also there's been so many kind of dress down Fridays that becomes the norm. Make sure to dress not just from uh, the waist up. Uh, don't come in in sandals and uh, shorts. Uh, that would probably be another one. And the last would be to be tolerant of nervous colleagues. I think some people more than others are gonna be reluctant to return to work. Uh, and it could be from their own medical condition. It could be from the medical condition or the medical risk of their loved ones, of uh, someone living in their house, an extended family member, a child who has not yet been vaccinated. So don't make cracks about people who are engaging in part-time work, perhaps because they're worried about exposure and include them if they're on a virtual call, even if they're not there in person. Um, also be aware of those people who just might not wanna, they might not wanna shake hands anymore, uh, again, for hygienic reasons. Well, it's important for leaders to recognize that this time of transition, as the vaccine becomes more widely dispensed throughout our country, throughout the world, uh, that, the coming back is not gonna be like a light switch. And just like it was a process to adjust to uh, COVID restrictions, it's gonna be a process to acclimate. And that's just from to live one way, uh, potentially under quarantine or under lockdown, uh, becomes just by behavioral conditioning alone, uh, a way of life. And that to go back even to the old ways is in itself a disruption. And that's going to cause stress. For some, that stress is gonna exacerbate underlying mental health conditions, or that stress can create a new mental health condition. And those can, that mental health issue and that stress could negatively impact an employee's job performance and productivity, could impact their engagement at work and their communications with a supervisor or an employee. It's gonna be really important for managers, supervisors, and company leaders to recognize that this stress and the mental health consequences coming out of that stress are gonna affect the company's bottom line. Employees will call out sick more often, managers will struggle to meet their productivity targets, and there will be a higher turnover rate. You have to recognize that there are millions of Americans right now suffering from mental health issues, and those people need 
better access to mental health care, quality mental health care, and better access to resources and tools. According to the National Alliance of the Mentally Ill, NAMI, mental health conditions are costing employers approximately $100 billion a year, oftentimes in the, uh, from the 200 million lost workdays that are experienced annually related to mental health issues. So it's not only in the interest as colleagues, coworkers, to do the altruistic thing and ask questions about how people are doing in a sincere way, not just passing them in the hall, but also if you are really trying to meet your company's bottom line, it's a wise investment to invest in mental health resources, EAP programs, and other maybe newer resources, again, using uh, virtual technologies to improve access to mental health to address those issues when they're uh, newer and earlier in treatment as opposed to when they're more debilitating and chronic. Yeah, when I've spoken to different companies, they've brought up the same concern, uh, not only the concern you have at Newman & Newman, but other companies that they've invested a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of money in developing a specific corporate culture. But obviously, the parameters of that corporate culture were largely driven by in-person contact. So to do that virtually, for many, feels like the corporate culture has changed, or especially even with technology, which has been so fantastic, that it's still different, especially if people are off camera or, and it's just one person talking without the usual back and forth banter and the nonverbal communication that we have uh, in person that oftentimes is lost in a virtual platform. So I think the answer has to be just as creative in terms of overcoming this, recognizing that some people are not gonna be back full time for personal reasons or for practicality and efficiency, that there are maybe some good things that came out of the pandemic that we might wanna keep it's not just been a total loss for many people not having to deal with the morning commute uh, or in the same way is more efficient and that we could have meetings, not necessarily traveling all over the country, all over the world, but we could have meetings more efficiently through these uh, you know, virtual platforms. But I think that there are going to be some things that a, co a company can do to reestablish the corporate culture, but maybe in a slightly different way. I think some easy early wins would be to celebrate the wins more, celebrate the positives in people's life. There's been so much grief and loss uh, in our companies, in our families over the past year, lost graduations, proms, uh, in-person meetings, death, um, and disability related to COVID-19 that we're gonna have to be more intentional about celebrating the wins, uh, whether that's a wedding or birth of a new child or something that would have been more personal in the past, that's just something that the whole team can share in, a personal achievement, a new certification, uh, meeting a, a, a target, um, getting a new customer or, or closing a big deal. Whatever it is, I see, I've seen that companies that will really enjoy those celebrations as an event to come together again, to reestablish that bond of, uh, of the mission, of the vision of the organization, those companies seem more successful. Viewing the technology or viewing the loss over the last year as simply an obstacle or an entirely negative, I think loses out that certain people might wanna take aspects uh, of, of their new life in the pandemic and carry that into the post-pandemic world. I will share a personal example, if that's all right with you, Linda, yeah, which is when things locked down last spring, our family, I have three children, came closer together and a lot of those extracurricular uh, things that we thought were enrichment for the children didn't seem, they were less important. And a lot of that time was spent uh, dividing and conquering, my wife spending time with one of the children in extracurricular, me coming home to work to frantically drive to an extracurricular actually led to more time for the family being splintered. And then that time around the dinner table or reading a book after dinner or a family movie on the weekends actually maybe was a little bit higher yield for us in terms of the emotional uh, dividend than maybe some of the things we were doing beforehand. And I hope to continue that. So I encourage people to think about what they liked about their uh, COVID life, if they can, try to carry some of those positives and share that with uh, other employees. Dr. Stevens, thank you so much for the wonderful insights you've shared with everyone. We will be giving um, folks a link to the Menninger Clinic where they can learn more about the services that Menninger offers and also learn a little bit more about you and the work that you do. We appreciate you and the work that you put out into the world. We're very grateful for you. Thank you, Linda.